Greetings! Back again here with another video, and this time we're making a wallet. It's a wallet that is very popular in our store. It's a flap wallet, so it's skinny and looks good. And when you flap it up, you get to see that raw leather look, which uh, also looks pretty good. So starting off, I'm, I'm gonna rough cut the size of the amount of leather I need, and it's the total amount. And it's about a square foot or so, like most wallets. And then using my template pieces, which uh, I can send to you or you can find them. Uh, they're actually modified versions of a quarter leather pattern. Um, and uh, yeah, anyway, so we're cutting out those pieces. There's a main body and uh, there's a, an A pocket and a B pocket <clears throat> and a strap. So the flap goes under the strap and the main body also has the flap part included and uh, the B pocket is like the back but it also folds into the middle making a separate pocket underneath the front main internal pocket hopefully that's not confusing <clears throat> so anyway um, we're cutting out these main parts um, the main body is a, a rectangle and then later on I'm going to curve the flap sides because I, I like I like curves and so I curve many places and this is uh, also something else is the pattern doesn't have a curved pocket for the back but I do a curved pocket for the back because I think it looks good. Uh, the A pocket which is this one has these little cutout tabs which is where the strap actually gets stitched in underneath um, the, the corners of the wallet so that the flap can be held by the strap um, so it is just a normal credit card vertical pocket basically um, except it has these little tabs which I'm cutting out now also when you do those make sure you cut the the, like the inner line you cut it from one side halfway and then the other side halfway so that was halfway and then that's halfway you see that uh, that reduces uh, and almost probably eliminates the problem of having like a too long of a cut and then you get like a a rippable leather piece which is never good thankfully that area is not very stressed though so it's unlikely that you'd have a problem as for the color, I'm going blue, straight blue. Uh, this blue is pretty dark and the leather is uh, good at absorbing this, uh, this particular leather. So it's very even in the end, which is nice. I do like to have some variation, which is why I do the vertical only dye application. Um, because then you can sometimes get little striping effects. This one has some of that, um, but it is very solid at the end. Also, the longer you let those dry, the more plain the color becomes. So here I got a close-up of how I do the thumb slot, and I use a little belt end punch, a round end punch, and I make little dots to mark where I need to do it. And then when you punch them like this, <clears throat> then after you punch both sides, you just join the sides with the knife and then you'll have a pretty nice and clean uh, thumb slide hole. <laughs> um, and it's always good to edge that, not just for comfort, but it makes the hole look like it was cohesively cut all smooth so with this like any wallet you're gonna want to edge and burnish your pocket tops and also that's the strap there you gotta edge the top side at least um, <clears throat> and we will also burnish I mean edge and burnish later 
like the sides of the wallet, but only once it's attached. So here I'm doing the leather balm and atom wax uh, finish application. <laughs> Best finish in my opinion. Makes it nice and glossy and some protection. And it's so easy because you just, you know, you put it on and then you take it off. Uh, you also need to make sure that you do this pretty evenly because if you don't, then it'll look like you have wetter spots than other spots that are not as wet and it could look really bad if it's very uneven so be careful but once you uh, apply it if you have that problem you can also try and like let it dry or you could potentially add more to the drier spots you know and just go over it again and sometimes that can solve that problem yeah, so there we go, we got the atom wax. You can see it's nice and shiny, beautiful. And the dye does have some variegation, I think would be the term. Looks good. Love how that looks every time. <clears throat> and also, the blue came out pretty dark this time. Um, darker than I think it usually does. So now, uh, I'm going to dye the edges and these dye markers from Angelus, they're pretty good. What you do is you just, you put some black dye onto the applicator tip. The tip goes into the marker a bit, so you got to take it out and then dip it into black or whatever color. I mean, black is an obvious choice, but yeah. And then it's kind of like easier to correctly apply black dye to the to the corners and the edges <clears throat> and safer <laughs> you could also use sharpie i'm gonna actually put up a video where we compare sharpie versus black dye and we'll see which one really looks better because from when i would test it out and you know, they just look pretty much the same. <laughs> Sharpie might just be black dye anyway. Uh, we'll find out more later, I think. Um, so yeah, as for the rest of the places that need the black, I'm gonna try and do every edge with that. So we're doing the thumb slider, we're doing the pocket tops. And then again, once we put the wallet together a bit, then we can edge dye and burnish um, everything else um, so here I am with the burnishing and I use tokenol seems to be like white glue almost I'm not sure what it is really but I think it might be so um, next we have to start putting this thing together we got all our pieces and so the pocket a goes on the inside of the main body and then we're gonna mark the tops with the awl and then mark the uh, the little tabs where the strap goes because you don't want to glue those because you could potentially glue yourself out of getting the strap in there um, so here we go I'm using the barge the clean one the one that's like less toxic or whatever and putting it on both sides and then I'm actually gonna spread it out with my finger because it sometimes just doesn't go where you need and uh, yeah it's pretty it's okay to use your finger extra glue I put on the bottom so that it can help join that and then we let that dry there was a video cut there I don't know if you saw but you gotta let that stuff dry I'm sure you know that and then we can press the pocket in and hopefully your main body is a little bit bigger than the pocket because then you can cut it down later. Um, and then to attach pocket B, it attaches to the back. And so matching the height of the corner top of pocket A, you make a mark and then I'm scraping the finish and some of the leather off of that area around the sides to help it glue. I don't have like a rougher or anything. So the thumb slot side is the one that goes on the back and we're gonna glue that in. Same thing with the barge. 
and make sure you get the barge off of the corners or yeah the the sides of the leather because you don't want to like have to try and burnish that because it doesn't work um, so that one I'm just gonna go all the way along and um, we're gonna yeah once again make sure there's no glue on the sides so once it's dry we're gonna press pocket B to the back matching the corner tops of pocket A on the inside and we'll try to make this as straight as possible press that down so now you can see where this wallet's going and pocket B is gonna fold around the bottom like that and we're gonna mark where the top goes and scrape off that paint again just kidding it's not paint it's die and finish and uh, we'll put some glue there and we'll let it dry <clears throat> don't need too much glue now um, the stitch line will also be basically all the way from the top of pocket A to the bottom to keep things simple so there we go got the glue in place no glue should go into the strap cutouts and then we can attach this pocket on the inside as well so now it's completely wrapped around the bottom <clears throat> and you will have somewhat uneven sides unless you got some crazy lucky cuts or something I don't know um, there you can kind of see how the wallet kind of takes shape the top folds over and you got two pockets inside, one pocket out. Um, I'm gonna curve the flap closure using the tokenol as my cutting guide. I do that a lot. It's just, it's a good angle. It looks good. <clears throat> uh, just cleaning off those edges there. Now yeah, I use a Dremel to sand. It makes things a lot faster and helps keep the edge square in my opinion. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm, I'm using it on a pretty slow setting by the way, but yeah, gently sand that so that it's all flat with each other. Um, also my sanding disc or whatever that thing is, is pretty blunt. So I got to change that or it's okay. It just takes a little extra time. So now we can edge around the entire thing, insides, outsides. Of the pockets and I do do the bottoms there like that makes things look nice you could also sand it off there's many ways to do things you know do it your way um, and we're gonna go all the way around the flap as well for that comfort and um, <clears throat> now we can die in the entire side of the wallet all the way around so using the marker again the marker is not fat enough to dye that whole thing so you gotta like color it in, in between the lines <laughs> where did we learn that skill well i never learned that skill i was always real bad at coloring in school i would have my parents do some of the coloring for me and they had this trick with the crayons i don't know what it was but you like it, it, it does like a faded faded fill-in thing and I think they would like take sometimes like shavings and do that I don't know they would do the same thing with pencil crayons as well uh, anyway um, yeah back to the leather uh, we're burnishing the edges all the way around the sides and this is gonna be it for the burnishing and everything and then we we can we can stitch in all the way down and stitch that strap in uh, obviously the sides here are pretty thick so you might want to use the flat end of the burnishing wand the slicker uh, so here's a close-up of like the edge black all around edged all around smooth nice uh, so anyway here we go we're putting it pretty nice they're old-fashioned they're like uh, veg tan insole suede exterior anyway I'm, I'm threading the needle here and I put it between my fingers there and 
slide it through and then what you want is to put the needle through the thread once at least a lot of people do two times uh, so once you get it through there you pull the back out and then pull it over the needle top and then it makes a little tiny knot type of thing uh, if you need more explanation I can help you out and then you want to do the same to the other side so as for sewing this thing I start at the top and uh, I think it might be smart to start at the bottom sometimes. Um, you, you can try it out. The problem with starting at the top is that you have, <clears throat> um, you have to burn the threads at the bottom and some of the finish will come off. The problem with starting at the bottom is that the same thing will occur at the top of the pocket at the back. So, you know, choose which one. <laughs> Anyway, it's a, sand, a saddle stitch, normal technique, 0.8 mil thread. And once you get to where the strap goes in, you gotta put it in there and then put the threads through like normal and hopefully the lines all match up for you. They do for me. See how easy that went through? And this obviously stitches the strap into the wallet frame, the wall. And it fills that little gap where there was that cutout. And therefore the whole wallet feels sturdy. There's no like squishy spot. Anyway, we're gonna go all the way to the bottom. And then I'm going to do one and a half back stitch to finish. So that's one. <laughs> Boom and a half and I finish on the back less people look at the back so finish on the back that's my opinion cut them threads and then burn them I cut them a little too long but it's all right just meant I had to burn it twice anyway do the same for the other side and here's what the thing looks like when it's done cute wallet handy Thanks for watching, like and subscribe if you want to see some more stuff, comment with any questions, thanks.